Will Goldstein here from the King's Court. The uh, name of this video is One God, comma, and One God with Big G, and comma, Many Gods, uh, small g. So um, I just listened to a debate between a um, Protestant theologian and a Mormon theologian, and they were talking about um, and we're talking about the idea of um, Athanasius said um, that basically that Christ became God so that we might become gods. So, and the Mormon pastor was quote, quoting all kinds of endless verses in the Bible with all the history of the church of that we're presenting this and agreeing with this. You know, I could, you know, I could spend my time and find all those verses from people like Augustine and, like I said, Athanasius and Clement, and write down the list of Tertullian, and you know, go through and, and probably find a huge list of all these who, who were basically agreeing with the idea uh, that our future state, you know, partaking in you know, with a divine nature, is is um, God, God, small g. Um, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to um, take a different course here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it up so that our um, give a lot of attributes of the difference between God and man, and what that difference will be in our that I believe in our risen state, in our glorified state. So we have those three positions. So Basically, um, number one, um, God is the creator. Will we ever be the creator? No, we're not the creator now. We are the created. Okay, when when in our glorified state, um, say when we're risen, will be we be creator? Absolutely not. We will never ever be the creator. Okay, there is nothing in our risen state that would ever make us equal to the Trinity okay, um, the Godhead, okay, so we are small g. <laughs> so God is eternal, God has been, it means he always has been, he always will be, we in our present state die. If we obtain eternal life, then our risen state, well then we are a little bit similar to God, at least going forward. <laughs> so God is sinless, number two, God is sinless. So God, Jesus Christ never sinned. It says in Second Corinthians five twenty one, Christ who never sinned. Okay, so um, we are obviously sinful. Okay, now in our glorified state, um, will we be sinful? Well, that's another debate. You know, um, Anselm believes we in our glorified state that we won't. That that's the choice is made here, and just like the. Some people believe even the present angels still have a free will, and they could sin, but they don't. Okay, and the, you know, and then the fallen angels—they sinned a long time ago, and they left, and then that's it. They witnessed what happened, and <laughs> the good angels, and we don't—we don't want that. So, so in our in our glorified state, will we be able to sin? Well, Anselm th thinks not. We will we will be, um, and that's the choice we're making is now and that will determine our future state and our glorified state. So um, God is holy. Um, the whole world is full <laughs> uh, of, the, of the glory of God. So obviously God is holy, uh, pure, um, set apart. He's different from every, everything. Um, there's nothing really like God. Okay, now will we be holy in our glorified state? Yes, we'll be set aside and, and purified, and um, so yes, and that's in that state we will be holy, but we will never be. We will be like the Son of Man in Christ. So Christ has the dual nature in Christology: the Son of God, Son of Man. The Son of Man is the glorified man, which is fully human, and we, I believe, will be like that part of Christ. Okay, so there's that difference. So, so Christ, that part of the, <laughs> the oneness of, of, of Christ and that dual nature, that Son of Man, that glorified Son of Man, that's what we will be like. 
So God is love. So God is perfect love, regardless of what you think about when you don't get what you want. God, is, God is, has reasons for being the way he is, and he's just and righteous, and, and all, everything has to balance out with God. So he, it's all his, his, love, his compassion and his judgment are all, and his righteousness all have to balance perfectly, okay? Which is hard for human nature to fully understand. So, sure, we participate in love and all the different aspects of love, uh, and, and I do believe that in our glorified state we will be like Christ, fully loving um, supernatural beings. That we, now we only have a taste of what love is. Okay? Light. God is light. So it says that God the Father dwells in unapproachable light. So, um, you know, so we have a spark of divinity within us, and that spark of divinity <laughs> will, you know, if, if, if we don't obtain a, a salvation, that spark of divinity dies, and, you know, then the question is, well, is there hell, or is there just perishing and no um, eternal death? I mean, I'm, the subject of this video is not going there, but the spark of divinity and light that is in us, if we, um, you know, obtain salvation and glorification, then that spark of divinity does become eternal, eternal light, because light is associated with our essence, our soul. So, so the spirit, the mind, so the way I look at the soul and the spirit and the mind, they're all kind of two working together, sort of like the mind, the mind is inside the light. <laughs> and that's, so in that essence, in our glorified state, yes, we will be um, eternal going forward, eternal life. Um, God is righteous, okay, so, and God is just, and all the other attributes of God. When you, when you give the attributes of God, you can't just say God is justice, because God is the essence of justice. When you say God is righteous, God isn't righteous like we can be righteous. God is the essence of what righteousness is. And you could go through every, you know, the whole list and the divine names by Dionysus the Arabagite, you know, and go through what is be God is beauty, beauty. Well, sure, God is beautiful, but God is beauty. The essence of what is beauty. So, um, so and those manifestations... I think in our glorified state, we will have, because the, the Son of Man is, is participating, I mean, is in the Godhead, the Son of Man with the Son of God, the Christ, okay, so and we will obtain a lot of those characteristics of being absolutely righteous and just, I believe. Um, All-knowing... So I don't think, you know, this, and this video is all just my speculation, okay? Because no one really knows the answers to this, but it's fine. I, have, I appreciate a great imagination. So all-knowing, so God, God is all-knowing. But that basically means is he knew us before we were even born. He knew us, he knew your existence in his mind before you ever existed, okay? Will we ever have that kind of knowledge? No, I do not believe that we can ever have that kind of knowledge. However, I believe we will have a tremendous amount of knowledge. It's infinitely, or maybe not infinitely, but almost infinitely beyond our current knowledge. It will be, that's what I mean, little g gods. We will have a, in a, an exalted state, partake, partaking in a, sense, in a certain sort of sense in God's divinity, and the whole purpose of this video is to, is to make the distinctions about what that little g as opposed to the big g God means. Okay, so omnipotent, we will have a lot of power. I mean, it talks about in the, in the, in the, um, in the Bible, you know, or in literature, you know, about the powers of angels have a tremendous amount of power. So, Will we have the same omnipotence that God has? No, but will we have a tremendous amount of power? Absolutely, in a glorified state like that? Absolutely. We will be like Christ. That's exactly what it says in the Bible. We will be like Christ. That He had a tremendous amount of power. 
Now, will we have the absolute, total divinity of Christ, the Son of God? No. But, but the Son of Man was participating in that. So, omnipresent. Um, hey, angels could get around pretty quick. <laughs> All of a sudden, uh, Gabriel, you know, shows up to give a message. Now, how did he get here? I don't know. And how did how did Christ uh, ascend back in the ascension? He says he went up in the clouds. I mean, how did Gabriel uh, appear in the different times in the Bible that he he did appear? Um, you know, so. Um, he just showed up, so hey, we will have, we will have a lot of mobility that we don't have right now. Okay, so um, God is simple, um, and we are compound. So basically, I'm getting a little, little bit of um, philosophy here, but most and theologians believe this. So, so God, what it means by God is simple and not compound is it basically means that. Everything that we know about God, it's uh, it's it's not compound. So his uh, one way of saying it, his will is his love, which is his power, which is his goodness, and it goes on and on and on. It's not we have these separate parts of us. You know, we have a body and we have a soul. We can die. You know, we're a composite mixture. Okay. God is just simply is one whatever he is what I'm talking about now is God the Father whatever he is it's simple and it's one it's not compound so our savior is um, you know is is the the way the, the truth and the life and so by following Christ we are learning the way and the truth and the life. Hope you enjoyed the video.